I thought I'd just make one up today. So before we start, just have a quick look at the materials. We got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. Got three brushes, large hake, three quarter inch flats, number three rigger, we got our water jar, bit of tissue in case we want to lift any paints off. Got 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper and it's clipped to a 9mm piece of ply. And then just on the top there drying I got my uh, tea towel. So let's start as always with the, uh, the big ape and some clean water all over, top to bottom. Nice even wet coat and it will just mean that the uh, paper will stretch evenly and also any clouds we put in or background will soften off nicely, give us that nice distant look. So I'm then going raw sienna is the first colour, just put it on. Quite random, there's no real um, order to it. Incidentally, if you can hear any background noise, next door we've got the builders in, so it might get a little bit, a little bit banger. This is a uh, raw sienna, and um, no, it's not. It's ultramarine. There's a bit of, a bit of Payne's grey. I'm just going to brush that in from either side. I'm going to try and leave a lighter area down the middle. I'm that sort of light coming right down. So to get that, obviously to make this lighter, obviously the paper's already white, so to make that look lighter you want to darken the edges. So if we can make the boat the both either side nice and dark, we'll get a nice effect down the middle of light hitting the uh, hitting some water. A bit, a little bit darker. Darker still. And then same two colours, well three colours, a bit of everything. I'm gonna, while it's still damp, just start put in some distant land, land mass and then pull some reflection straight down same on the other side I'm going to go, let's try and vary it slightly now I'm going to go a bit more raw sienna Down those reflections. Now I've introduced a bit of lemon yellow into it now. This one might be a little bit closer to us. And again, while the colours are on the brush, pull them down. So it's some nice reflections. Paper stretched a little bit, so I'm just going to pull it tight and refix it. So I'm switching back to the, the left again, get another layer in, so I'm going, it's a bit closer to now, so I'm going to introduce a bit more brightness into the colour, so lemon yellow, ultramarine, and let's see now that one looks a lot, a lot stronger that, and again, pull down the reflections, paper's still wet, so it still looks nice and soft. Stronger still, maybe a touch of Payne's grey as well. See, so even richer green, stronger and stronger. And again, all the reflections down while the, maybe even a bit of light red, but not too much. It's a very strong colour. I need a little bit. And again, pull those down. Now I'm going to switch back to the right, right hand side. Really strong colours now. I'm going to go burnt umber, 
ultramarine, a bit of lemon yellow. Just enough water to keep the hairs together on the height brush. No more than that. And it's sort of really want to come there again. Another bit of land mass. It's coming down there again. I'm just going to pull down the reflections. See, paper's starting to dry now, so you can see you get the hard edge as opposed to the softer edges that you get in here because the paper's wet. Once the paper's dry, you get your hard edge. Now the clouds would look like that in the sky if we hadn't wet it. That's why I always start off by wetting the paper. Again, just enough water on the brush to keep all the airs together. And then, let's go back to this side. Put some, uh, I don't want to cover over those reflections. I quite like these reflections, so I'm going to start about here. Bring that right out, so somewhere like that. Little land mass there. You can even maybe stick with a hike. Maybe even put a few little little fence posts. Quick sweep. Yeah, a bit of light red, change the colour a bit, see how the colour's changed. Lemon yellow, get back to that greeny look. And again, quick sweep around. And let's bring this out. these nice little muddy bits in the water. There's even a little bit on the other side. Yes, we come just slightly higher up to start this one up there a bit. A bit of light red, just to change the colour a bit. Not too much. Um, lemon yellow, and again, quick sweep like that. And it's very quick. Only do it once. Don't mess about with it. Uh, where should we come? So I don't want to come too far over here. I might just leave it like that actually. It's so tempting to overdo it. A real struggle to uh, just rein yourself in. Maybe pull that down there somewhere like that. Maybe even a few more little things posted up there somewhere. Um, theme stick, little figure or something, just someone, maybe someone fishing or something like that, just a little duck for the head, and then a little body, and then let's just give them a little rod out there, like that, a little fisherman. Um, I think I'll just stick a little boat, a little boat on the horizon. Before I do that, I've just got to give it a quick dry.
brush can take a rigger, damp rigger brush, on a clean piece. Use a clean bit of tissue, don't use a lot what I'm doing here. Just clean the rigger, just damp, just fair, slightly damp, not too much. Work out where you're going to stick your boat, I reckon somewhere about there. Somewhere darkish, so, so it actually stands out against the darker background. That's not wet enough, the paint's not coming off. So if there's no paint coming off, just re-wet it and start again. Just finding that happy medium. And then just take out the shape of the sail. And you've got our little boat there on the horizon. Little reflection. Not too much, just enough to give the suggestion that there's someone out there. And I might uh, just call that one finished. So back to the rigger, darkish mix. And then just pop your signature in the corner. I'm going to call that one finished. So let's just have a closer look at it. So here's our finished painting. If we just uh, move in a bit closer. So the first thing I put in with these clouds. Now I've kept, tried to keep the centre as light as possible to give this uh, impression of light on the water. And then obviously putting the, putting the clouds and the water in at the same time helps keep the colours just exactly the same. I often, I used to just do the sky area first, but then you find you've got to remix the same colours and it can be hard to make them the same, exactly identical. So I find it a lot easier to do the uh, sky and water at the same time. Then we put the, the most distant land goes in using the same colours as the sky. And then I generally sort of use more and more yellow as I, as I come forward. Little bit of life there, just a tiny little fisherman. And then just a simple little boat on the horizon, don't forget the reflection. Just a few little rickety little fence posts just helps add a bit of man-made element to the scene. Well thanks for watching, keep practicing. Any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.